Hi, my name is Namwali Serpel, and I'm a writer and an associate professor at the University of California, Berkeley. The rad thing I'm doing right now is I'm writing the great Zambian novel. Zambia is the country I come from in Central Africa. Today I'm reading from Rad American Women A to Z, written by Kate Schatz and illustrated by Miriam Klein Stahl. And I've chosen Z is for Zora Neale Hurston to read to you today. Zora Neale Hurston, who captured the stories and voices of many generations. Zora Neale Hurston's mother encouraged her children to always jump at the sun. It was good advice, and it's just what the bold, brash Zora did. Zora grew up in Eatonville, Florida, the first all-black town in the United States, a place where black people could own businesses and be elected to important positions. Zora loved Eatonville and the people in it. When she wasn't reading books, she was listening to the townsfolk tell colorful stories that had been passed down for generations. Zora absorbed this folklore and began to make up her own fantastical tales as well. After her mother died, Zora's life became difficult. For years, she drifted around without a real home, working here and there as a maid, but always wanting more. She managed to make her way to Howard University, where she studied theater and joined a literary club. From there, she headed to New York City, where she settled in the neighborhood of Harlem. There, she joined thousands of other African Americans who were creating music, art, and literature. This was called the Harlem Renaissance. Zora was charming and outgoing and quickly befriended great artists like Langston Hughes. She began publishing her stories and plays, most of which were based on the stories and people she remembered from her southern childhood. It was an exciting time for black people like Zora, and she was in the center of it all. A scholarship to Barnard College led the ever-curious Zora to study cultural anthropology. She began traveling the world to record the stories, songs, dances, and voices of black cultures. This kind of research is called fieldwork. She trekked across the American South, Haiti, Jamaica, and Honduras, taking pictures and learning all about these rural communities. She published essays about what she learned and also wrote novels, using her research to create authentic dialogue between her characters, like Janie and Tea Cake, in her novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God. In all, Zora published four novels, two books of folklore, an autobiography, numerous short stories, and several essays, articles, and plays. She is considered one of the great American writers of the 20th century. I chose Zora Neale Hurston because she was one of the first American writers that I read when I first moved to this country. And I was so entranced by how she used language to show how people really speak to each other. The way she writes people's voices on the page is just incredible, and I'd never seen anything like it. She remains one of my favorite writers to this day, and Their Eyes Were Watching God remains one of my favorite novels. Women are often told that they should change themselves, that they should be prettier or nicer or smarter or stronger, and I think the most important thing is to know who you are and be true to who you are. Be exactly yourself. Be exactly the rad woman you already are.